right, girls, Pastor Jess here. We are going to be showing you a portion of our women's conference. I pray that you're blessed by it. I hope you learn. These are some hot topics and some things. I pray you learn and you're educated and that you see God's hand in it and that it blesses your heart. Love you. thought we would hit some hot button issues in our culture because we want to use these women as example but we also want to be able to bring the word to light on some of the things that we might be hearing in the news or in the social media world so the first phrase that I would like us to start with and talk about and Pastor Michelle you can develop this for us is this phrase that we hear all the time and we even saw it in our opener this morning my body my choice yep. <laughs> Okay, so we all know this is a very controversial issue and it's polarized our country for years. And there's so much emotion and passion surrounding this topic. And I think, you know, we leave ourselves, we, we're asking this question, you know, we know the truth, right? But how do we present this truth to people, right? In, Isaiah 1.18, it says, come, let us reason together that we would listen with intent. So as we are talking to people, it's, I just want to encourage you to listen with intent. A lot of these people are deceived, right? And as Christians, we understand the truth. We know the truth that life is precious, right? But we have to be able to listen because some of these people are coming from a place of just they just either don't know and because this is what they've been taught or whatever it may be, but they're deceived. And so how do we approach that as Christians when we're looking at a woman who maybe didn't ask to be placed in this position? Or maybe there's a young girl who's afraid and doesn't want to tell her parents that she's pregnant. You know, there, again, there's so many emotions surrounding this. And in 1 Corinthians six nineteen, it teaches us that because of our faith in Christ, we are not our own and that our bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit. We've been bought with a price, the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Once we're able to actually listen and talk to people and help them to understand whose they are and that their body was bought with a price, then that's when that transformative power will grab a hold of their hearts. And that's what we need to do. We need to be able to listen and understand where they're coming from so that we can minister to them properly. And I think that's where, of course, we know this whole my body, my choice. That's not of God, right? We know that God made life and that we're not the ones that are to be taking that away. But how can we love people to life? Right, and not just shame them or, or you know, dump our Bibles. How can we get them to learn about who they've been created to be and why life is so precious? Yeah. You know, and Pastor Deborah mentioned the fact that God gives us grace. Or Pastor Jess, one of the sessions this morning, the grace is the power to do what God has called us to do. And as believers, right, we are stewards of our body. We are to give our body as a living sacrifice. So even though that's the world's proclamation and the world's protest, my body, my choice, we can say that I am a living sacrifice, right? That I lay my body down for the king. And so there's a greater authority that I serve. But that only comes after they've heard that good news and they can have the grace right. of God to believe that and trust God through that process, right? And not, it's not our bodies, right? But we're stewards right. because we present our bodies as a living sacrifice. Thank you, Pastor Michelle. There's another saying that's been around for a long time, right? This idea of being a woman, right? I am woman, hear me roar, right? You can hear it in the room. Pastor Sue, can you talk a little bit about that? Well, that actually began with Helen Reddy in 1972. That was an interesting We're year, still huh, Pastor Deborah. <laughs> anyway, well, you can definitely try to do things in your own strength, and you can demand your rights, and you can 
just become as ugly as the, the person that you're having the conflict with, or you can do it God's way, and God tells us actually to have a meek and quiet spirit. And now, many times people uh, interpret meekness as weakness, and other translations says gentleness, but actually meek, meekness means power under the control of the Holy Spirit. And so when you can control your temper, when you can control your outrage and, and have the peace of God settle on you before you're too quick to answer a situation, then you're exemplifying that meek and quiet spirit. First Peter 3, 3 and 4 is where that, scripture, that meek and quiet spirit comes from. It says, do not let your adornment be merely outward, arranging the hair, wearing gold, or putting on fine apparel. He doesn't say that's wrong. He just says, don't let it just be about that as a woman. But rather let it be the hidden person of the heart with the incorruptible beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit, which is very precious in the sight of God. You might not think it's precious. You might think that's maybe it sounds totally weird to you today. But God says that it's precious in his sight that we could be a woman of God that could hear from God. And as crazy is going on, we can settle the wisdom of God in our heart before we open our mouth. I love the Amplified. It says, let not yours be merely the external adorning, but let it be the inward adorning and beauty of the hidden person of the heart with the incorruptible and unfading charm of a gentle and peaceful spirit, which is not anxious, do I hear a an name in? Amen. Or wrought up, but is very precious in the sight of God. And God, you know, he wants us to walk with him in the cool of the day. He wants us to walk with his peace. Not to be anxious and worried and wrought, wrought, and, uh, wrought up and, and um, just fearful about everything going on ar around us. But because we spend time with him, we spend time in his word. Then when there is injustice and we are smart enough to know that it might have to do with our gender, that we don't um, command our rights or get competitive or, or um, belligerent, but that we step back, let the peace of God settle in our heart, receive the wisdom of God and operate in the wisdom of God. And if you will do that, God will, God will exalt you every time. He will cause you to come into places that, um, I love it says that, that, um, oh, what's that scripture that no man, uh, oh, my mind just went blank. But many times that you can sense that there's something that's, it, you know, a force or a person that does not want to let you into a certain avenue or a role or a career because of nothing but your gender. But when you settle your business with God, I know at one point in my life, I was a single woman, I, a woman, single, and yet God opened doors for me to be in a pastoral role, ministering from pulpits where they didn't even believe that women should preach. But it was because every time there was a door that was closed, I would just talk to my father God about it and say, wait, didn't you call me? I, it wasn't a mistake. I was a woman, right? That wasn't a mistake. And he would open doors and he'll do that for you as you settle your business with him. There's an acceptance there, a realization that meekness is power. It's power in the center, as opposed to the roaring, which is force, right? Power from the outside. And that's us putting our little energies to change the situation. But if we trust that meek spirit, that's God moving things from the middle, opening doors that no man can open. Right? The kingdom ways that are so much better. That was a scripture. I Did I just quote a scripture? He opens doors even... no man can open. I've kind of secretly always kind of enjoyed that. <laughs> It closes doors. No man can close. Anyway, that was Okay, great. okay. We are, we are down to like the last couple of minutes. But Dr. V, we are living in an age when there's so much gender confusion. What used to be male and female, right, is now supposed to be a spectrum. And so as we talk to people who find themselves along this spectrum, right, it usually comes down to I don't feel like a woman. I don't feel female. Can you address that? That's a biggie for just a few minutes, isn't it? <laughs> but once we come into the kingdom of God, there are different rules and there are different laws. 
and our natural inclinations don't matter anymore. I mean, when we accept Jesus as Lord and Savior, you probably don't feel any different, but you've confessed with your mouth and believed in your heart that Jesus is Lord and that he was raised from the dead and you are saved regardless of how you feel. The Bible says we walk by faith and not by sight. And this is, this is how the kingdom of God works. It's not based on how you feel. So the fact that you don't feel like a woman doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. You know, and I talked earlier about all the stereotypes. You have to think, you know, why don't I feel like a woman? Is it because I don't fit into the box that the world has made? Is it because I don't like my nails painted and I don't like to shop and what are some other stereotypes? I don't like to cook. I'm all of those. I don't, um, don't want to have kids. I don't want to have any kids. You know, I like sports. I like watching sports. All these things in the box of woman, that is created by the world. And so you are, what we're trying to learn is get, a, get kingdom minded. You are who God says you are. God says he created the male and female. There wasn't a bi or a trans or anything in between. And no matter what you do to your body to try to make these feelings come to pass, you're still a woman. If you don't have boobs, you're still, you were still created to be a woman. No surgery or anything else is going to change that. If I feel like a car, we use this for altar call all the time. If I feel like a car and I stay in the garage and I go vroom, vroom, it does not make me a car. It makes me a person that feels like they're a car. <laughs> and so we have to really check our feelings because in the kingdom of God, we have to know that we are walking by faith. We are who God says we are. We are the head and not the tail. We're above and not beneath. We're strong. We are the righteousness of God. We are set apart, sanctified for his plan and his purpose. Amen? And we are here. Our purpose is to tell others about the kingdom of God, to enlarge his kingdom. We have a plan and a purpose. And, you, you know, so many people are like, well, I don't feel this way. I'm finding myself. And I'm telling you, you have a purpose. God has given us all a purpose, to enlarge his kingdom, to sell, tell somebody else about Jesus. And a lot of times the devil will try to stop you and say, well, I don't know a lot of scripture. I don't know a lot of verse. But all you got to do is tell your story. What has he done for you? What did he save you from? How does he make you feel? How did he, he change your life? You don't know anything about the Bible, but you know that. And nobody can take away your truth. Amen? Amen. Woo! That's good. That's good. You know, when all of us, probably the vast majority of us, since there's always the 80-20 rule, thought about coming to conference. You probably gave it, you probably just didn't reach into your closet and go, I'm just going to wear whatever. I know for me, you know, I bought this last fall and I've been waiting the entire year to wear it. So um, that's also a part of our femininity. And I don't want to leave this stage without celebrating that. This kind of thing, the external, doing your hair, I, I don't notice, I used an iron on my hair. Um, <laughs> twice a year, right? But that's also fun and beautiful and wonderful. It's not what our value comes from, but it's an important part of who we are. Will you wrap this up with that thought, Pastor Tracy? Yeah. Um, you know, uh, working with our worship team and with our volunteers in La Roca, I've had to tell our ladies, we've, we, we communicate with our clothing. What is your clothes saying? Whether we want that to be true or not, it just is. What are we communicating about the kingdom? When, the, when they walk through the doors and we're here as the worship team, what is our clothing telling them? You know, King Solomon was visited by queen, the Queen of Sheba, and she was just like, your wisdom, the riches, the clothes that your servants wear. We're showing off the kingdom of God. So let's, you know, here's another thing the Lord told me. Your gender is a gift from me to you like a Christmas gift that you open. Enjoy it. Enjoy it. Please don't reject it. And many of us, not many of us, some of us may have been, you know, abused because we were girls in some ways. So we, we don't want that gift. But God can restore that and heal that. And you'll come to a place someday 
where you're like, I like being a girl. I like being a woman. This is fun. So we do need to celebrate it and thank God for how he made us. Yeah, amen, amen. Thank you, panel, for your study, for your preparation, for your wisdom. Did you appreciate that?